Without the basic skills of language and listening, children are not going to be able to develop their literacy skills. Nursery, they were playing in the water, and I started saying, I'm going to splash it here and splash it here. And after a few minutes, somebody said, you'll need this bucket. <laughs> <laughs> and the children and I began to talk. The thing is to ask questions or give commentaries which will open language, not close it. If you eat one of these, I'll give you um, more of my toast. Can you help them eat it then? Because it's finding it hard to hold it. Sometimes there are classrooms which say, do what you want. Uh, some say, do what I tell you. And I think the Gotskin approach to early years, it is that golden middle between these two. Once upon a time, there was a, a farmer. Let me see your farmers. And what did he plant, Abigail? He planted a tiny seed. That's right. And the seed grew and grew into an enormous turnip. Many children these days are not read stories or told stories before they come to school. Um, so teachers have got to do lots of storytelling. Before you can write a story, you've got to have a head full of all the things that a story involves. Characters, settings, plots, but also the language of stories, once upon a time, um, and the sorts of ways stories are told, which are sentences which aren't similar necessarily to the ordinary language of speech. The old lady pulled the man, and they pulled, and they pulled, and what happened this time? Pop, 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 pop. It came out of the ground. Games like making story maps, Galena's story symbols, all of these will help en enrich that. I love that little boy telling his Goldilocks story, that it was gorgeous. She eats the porridge and sits so on the chest and breaks the baby bed. Oh, she's naughty. And, 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 and she sleeps on all the beds that the daddy one is too hard and the mummy one is too soft. It helps them to create their own stories and uh, to be very creative because then they have sort of a structure uh, on which they can rest uh, and uh, to talk about. We are a very visual society so you can move into the, the written symbols that they see around them in the street and opportunities to use environmental print as early encounters with reading and, and indeed writing through their role play is very, very useful. What's this one? It's a jump, jump, jump. go on then. Jump, jump, jump. And jump, then it's a another jump. 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 Then we hop, no, then we hop, hop again. <gasps> what do we do here? Curl up with everybody. That's it. Then the business of symbols again, when the children were doing the clapping and stamping and jumping in response to symbols, that's a beautiful activity because it, it's involving movement. Um, responding to visual symbols and it's got the whole business of left right directionality which children have to learn in order to read and I'd love to do that one well done excellent thank you Ready to wake your tired hands up and your fingers? Fingers like to wiggle, waggle, wiggle, waggle, wiggle, waggle. Fingers Auto graphics, uh, I think it's a very interesting new program and it is based on the ideas that you learn to draw special patterns which will help you in uh, writing and uh, the children use uh, the whiteboards and writing ring and uh, we'll do a lot of finger gym exercises as there is brain gym so we do finger gym and uh, for the children to be able to develop their fine motor skills. You're going to hold your pen with that. 
that finger, that, that finger on the top, Declan. I'll put a star. The problem is boys. The girls will do fine motor skills, no bother. The girls will... Girls just play with little things and like doing little delicate things, you know, poly pocket things and so on. Um, whereas boys are much more gross motor movers, so they would rather play um, in the playground big, running around. And it can sometimes be difficult to get boys to develop their finger muscles and their fine control. Um, so you've got to look for boy friendly things like locks and keys, uh, tools, um, dinosaurs always go down big that they'll want to play in small world environments with. Um, because until you've got that hand-eye coordination and that control, that muscular control, you can't use a pencil. Ah, tickles. It is a bit tickly, isn't it? It's like a prickly hedgehog. It's like thorns. Thorns. You're right, Declan. That is a very good thing. The essence is beautiful, wasn't it? Um, the finger exercises to strengthen like the muscles. <laughs> the finger ring, which is a, a brilliant way to get children to start holding their pens and pencils correctly. Learning the, the shapes, the basic three shapes that underpin English letters, and then concentrating on certain sorts of movements, which then can be taken into art activities. Um, I saw that actually in the nursery when I went to visit. The, the, the shapes they were making in their autographics lessons suddenly turned up in their artwork that they were doing independently later. Um, but also looking at those shapes and thinking what they are standing for. Ladders and fences and um, stairs, one little boy said, didn't he? Brilliant. Lovely. Mm. Mind that water, because it'll go all over you and then it'll go a bit wet. Do you know Migva? Hello. Hello. Who's that pig? <laughs> She's called Mig. The Mig the Pig um, group, the children obviously knew and enjoyed the book. Um, and, I, and that repeated reading of books is it's such an important element. We had lots and lots of rhyming words in there, didn't we? Can anyone think of a rhyming word that we just heard? Charlotte. T w k k. Good girl, well done. Now, I loved the way the teacher had brought in the progression from thinking about the the individual words and how you can blend and segment m i g and so on, and the enjoyment the children were getting out of the rhyming, which was clear. When children start enjoying rhyming, you know they've got the, the, the starts of phonics, and they start playing with it themselves. Good boy, can you put it with an ig? Good boy, go and sit down. Has he made gig? Yes! Yes, well done. G, I, G. She'd also used magnetic letters to help children practice that making words, and then it had built up to words on cards, so we were moving up towards a sentence level. I think it's really important with young children that we concretize the activities in this way. So using words on cards to build up your sentence. Putting the little sentence along the board of Mig the pig had lost her wig, I think it was. Um, I really liked that. I thought it was lovely because I, I think it's so useful for children to see words that they can pick up and move about, the actual concretizing the words. Um, it shows so clearly what a word is because it's a very difficult concept for children, word, letter. So helpful if you can pick up a thing called a letter, pick up a thing called a word. Um, it shows the gaps between words and the way they go down. The teacher was showing how to write just the one. You don't have the boredom of writing the whole thing, you know, just one word that you showed to her. And, of course, the full stop at the end, which the children all remembered. What do we need at the end, like someone reminded me? Well done. A full stop at the end of a sentence. That is a very, very good way to put sentences together and help children see what it is that makes a sentence. OK, Heidi, yes, what word did you have? Pig. Can you sound it out for me? Huh? Good girl, well done. Anyone got another Rhythm one? and rhyme seem to be critical to reading competence. So music has advantages in that respect. And I'm seeing more and more teachers, it's lovely, uh, turning the things that they want the children to remember into a little song. Um, what was it? 
somebody was doing for me the other day. It was a phonics one. Um, to the tune of Little Brown Jug. Ka-ata, ka-ata. These three sounds are ka-ata, ka-ata, ka-ata. These three sounds make... And the children give you the word back. Yeah, lovely. The Finnish teacher said to me, Music tunes the mind to pattern and the ear to sound. Perfect. Exactly what it does. It's lovely to see phonics back on the landscape again, I have to say, because for a long time, you know, it was banned practically in this country. And we had many children whose education suffered a lot because they weren't doing phonics. So it's great to see that it is being taught and it's being taught well. Oh, very good girl. Twig, t w e r e go. Well done. Very, very clever. Being ready for school doesn't necessarily mean being able to read, write and count, but being able to learn how to read, write and count. Children learn best when they are enjoying themselves. If children are having fun, they will probably learn as if you have structured the fun to get the right result that you want out of it. So it's really important that children enjoy what they're doing.